and seen the website, you'll know we're very pleased to welcome back, after a long absence, Kumi Chai, the founder and chair of the Population Community Development Association. Kumi Chai is the founder and chair of the Population and Community Development Association, the largest local NGO in Thailand. This visit, his topic will be one of the world's most innovative schools. Primarily, he will focus on how to make rural education relevant for the 21st century by changing the current approach, one of teaching and learning in three ways. What is taught, how it is taught, and the role of the school. You might also know that Kumi Chai was also the founder and, uh, of Cabbages and Condoms group, restaurants both here in uh, Pratamak and in Bangkok. So please join with me in welcoming Kumi Chai. Good morning, thank you very much indeed, Noi, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, I have two issues for my claim to fame. The first, I am only a semi, I'm a semi expatriate. You're all expatriates, I'm only a semi because my mother's Scottish, my father's Thai. So I can only be a semi expatriate. <laughs> and the second one is that. I have been coming to Pattaya for 72 years, so probably more than all of you in here. I came at, at the age of, of, of five. And then finally, I have just applied to be a member here, and if it requires your vote, please help me. <laughs> and I'd be delighted to come down. And the, the, the issue that has been given uh, to me, and I have given to you, is on education. And so let me just put it up on the board as you can see there. I will walk around and look around as I see it. This is what we call the bamboo school. It has a campus in Pattaya, but the students keep on coming uh, for two weeks at a time from grade seven to grade 12. So that they're permanently in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. And Thai education, as you probably have seen, is road memorization with very little issues on life skills and occupational skills. That's one of the major problems. And the gap between what you learn in school and what you need in life is extremely wide. And I think most people realize that we have many, many problems in life. So in fact, we're not preparing them for the world of tomorrow. I'm not so sure we're preparing them for the world of today. Definitely we were preparing them for the world of yesterday. But I doubt about tomorrow at this stage, unless there's some very, very significant changes. And uh, here is one example. The World Bank came out with it a year and a bit ago, that of all those who complete compulsory education in Thailand, grade 9, 32% are functionally illiterate, which means they can read, but they can't explain. You try it out on some people. If they can explain, that means they're not the, the one third, that they're above. So this is the case. There are many, many other problems, and this is an issue. Yet we spend a huge amount on education. We are the second highest in the world in terms of proportion of the national budget dedicated to education. The second highest in the whole world, just behind Hong Kong. But look at the result. There are many, many issues involved, including corruption. So that's the case that faces Thailand. And uh, we need to do an awful lot about it. We've had, 20, we've had 20 ministers over the last 17 years in, for education. Let's keep on changing, like musical chairs. And therefore, it's very clear we need to change. And my work has been involved in trying to make change in Thailand. The first one was in family planning. From seven kids, we managed to bring it down to 1.2 children. On HIV, when it was hit very hard in Thailand, we've introduced very strong measures and brought it down whereby uh, new infections was reduced by 90, 90%, and according, that's according to the UN, and according to the World Bank, 7.7 uh, million people had been prevented from being infected and dying because it was a very strong effort that was done. 
that was our second book. The third, the third part was to in, introduce into Thailand social enterprises, so that social enterprises can help earn money and use the profits for charitable activities, such as a cabbages and condom restaurant, as an example. And the other one was to bring in a partnership between companies and rural villages in rural development partnership to try and wipe out poverty in certain areas. And now the latest for the last 10 years has been education. So our work has been to try and make some changes in Thailand, and luckily we have not failed, luckily. And so we're moving ahead. So this is our current endeavor in education. But I hope you will see that we want to make a school more than what it was to you and to me in our earlier days. So we want to change in three ways. The first one is that what we teach. The curriculum needs to be changed. A lot of it is totally irrelevant. Two, the way we teach it, we've got to stop standing and barking in front of the students in class. And the third one is the role of the school. The school needs to change from being a, a, and bring in the private sector and universities to help with primary and secondary education. You cannot leave this to the Ministry of Education because we have left it to them and this is the case. We need to change, the world needs to change. And so that the school must be changed from being a school purely for students into a lifelong <coughs> learning center for all, to everyone in the community. And at the same time, it must act as an engine of change or focal point by improving the quality of life and income in surrounding schools. In a nutshell, whatever you want to learn in the school, let us know. Any subject, any age, we'll find a teacher for you from, the, from society, from the community. And the school must help the rural communities to get out of poverty. Schools have often put parents into poverty. Now we believe we can get them out of poverty. We have almost 40,000 schools in Thailand. All of them have land underutilized. All of them have buildings underutilized. They have teachers underutilized and open for 200 days of the year. We can do so much more. In reality, I'm trying to make the school the savior of Thailand, not the Thai military. We want the military to have a rest. <laughs> We've had 25 coups already. We've had 21 constitutions, and they're still going on. And so we believe now if we really turn the school into a lifelong learning center and have the social and economic advancement, we can make Thailand a much better place. And of course, we have to teach many things to make them a better person. And that's what we have tried to do. So we have to advance from this to this. So the school has to change from being desktop telephone into what you have around on your table today as pioneered by what we call the Bamboo School in Northeast Thailand. It's about four hours from Bangkok, probably five from here if you go round one way, and, and it's next to the Cambodian border. That's the area of the school. That's the sort of Google Earth. And that's the boundary of the school, about 100 right. It was bought 30 years ago for 3,000 baht per right, so it was not very expensive. It was flooded, that's why it was so cheap. And so a closer view of the school. And this is where the students come from. About 30 provinces, it's a boarding school. We call this, if I went to a school in Australia, and Australians would know what it's called, it's called Geelong Grammar. So this is what we call Geelong Grammar for the poor. And we even have minority groups, we have Mon, Karen, Mon, and we're looking for more. And we also have one from uh, Cambodia, from Laos, and soon we hope from Cambodia and Myanmar to come in. And this is what we're trying to do with our students. Some want to produce very smart people and they become corrupt. We don't want to do that. We want to produce good citizens who are honest and willing to share. We have the rich in Thailand who are quite good people, but have not been trained how to share. So they don't share. We have to train them from kindergarten how to share. This is what we need to do. Second, they have to be honest because we have lies all over the place. 
And because we don't have discipline, we need to also have discipline and obey the law in all aspects. We also want them to possess life skills and occupational skills, not just how to read and write. Life skills and occupational skills, know how to manage and have grit. Do not give up. Have determination. Successful people are those who do not give up, not the ones with the highest IQ. Successful people right around the world are the ones who don't give up. We have <coughs> community development leaders and, of course, practice and promote gender equality. And, of course, the environment is a, is a natural part of it. That is the goal of the school. And we've set it up for 10 years now. And we believe we've not failed. And so, yes, it's, it's a private school. It's not free, but you pay in what God gave you, goodwill and labor. So you pay the school fees in community service and tree planting. You pay half, your parents pay half. You're the, the students are the ones getting education, so you pay. And parents pay the other half. So 400 hours of community service each, and 400 trees each per year. So that's it. So each time, each student that goes through the school will have helped to create almost 5,000 trees in Thailand and help about 5,000 hours. And here's an example, 5,400 uh, trees and 400,000 community service. And this is just an example. They go to the community, they ask the elderly people to help the, the, the citizens and the children to come out and help clean the area, do it together. And so they become quite an inspiration in surrounding villages and in their own area. And parents come from all over Thailand, so they do their planting, tree planting, and the community service. And each parent has a book that has to be signed by the village head or the local monk or the local imam or the local church to say that these have been done. And the students have to ask their parents every week, are you doing it? Are you doing it? Reverse the other way. And so this school, the students teach you how to be a manager, not how to <coughs> read and write only. They help to run the school. We have a student government. And that's meeting of a student government. Everything that happens in that school must go through the student government. Everything. You name it. You want to take a look at the food, the nutrition value, incoming teachers, students, all purchasing. Everything is done by students. By the time you finish the school, you know how to run life. You're an adult. You'll be accepted by any company, even after grade 12. And so these are just some of the committees. They do all the briefing of visitors, even in English. All purchasing and audit. And they do the school budget. Safety, environment, waste management, repairs and maintenance. And here is the student group briefing. The deputy prime minister who visited the school is sitting there in the white shirt on the right, in the middle, listening. And then they walk with him around the school. And there are certain groups at different places to explain what activities are going on at the school. And we have about 1,200 visitors every month coming in from different parts of the country to see about this school. And many have asked, can we help them turn their schools into something similar to our school? And that's now happening, it's all now. On all the way to the Prime Minister, and at this time I'll explain about that later on, that the Prime Minister wants about 77 type of bamboo school this coming year and several thousand in the future to be very student-centric in both learning and action in the school and to be involved in the community. So it's, it's found the, the year of the Prime Minister. And here is one committee going to check on the food, uh, every, the purchases. It's delivered every month. And they go to check the condition of the market and ask the pin and other people in the market of this particular supplier to us. And every it, supply is reviewed every month. And here's buying of, of equipment for the school, slide projector, ice cream machine, buying of five vehicles. This was given by, by IKEA for a pro project for the school to go and help 50 schools a year in, in providing social enterprises, farm, trying to improve what the schools. They came to us, so we went to IKEA, and IKEA said, OK, well, work with you. And so they went to Toyota, Nissan, Isuzu, into the web took a look, and then the teacher drove them, they went to the, the companies and asked to check and so on, and then after sales service, then finally asked to see the chairman, asked for a special price. 
So they learn how to buy. They learn how to do as many things as possible they do the school budget. And here is the audit committee, the anti-corruption committee. They check on all the purchases to make sure everything is as specified. If you want to be a student at this school, if you would like to send some, we'd be delighted. But they are interviewed and selected by students, not by teachers. Parents are also interviewed. Not quite interrogated, but interviewed. Why do you want to send your child here? You want to get rid of him or something, or what? <laughs> Have you done anything for the public, a public good in the past? If not, are you able to do it? Are you willing to do it? And so on and so on. They're very good, very polite, but very firm. And if you want to be a teacher, you have to be interviewed by the students. First, a written exam put up by the students, then an oral exam like this, and then you have to show how to teach. If you can't teach, they're not going to hire you. They say that the teacher will determine what sort of person you're going to be. We can buy our own shoes, our own clocks and watches, earrings, but we have no say whatsoever on the people who create our future, that's the teacher. So the world has to change. They must have more say in, in the parents as well as the teacher and the students in the teachers of the future. This is what we hope will happen more and more. And this is what Thailand needs. People with creative, creative skills, creativity, and innovative skills. It's outside the box, but not outside the law. We have the policeman doing that already. <laughs> And this is in front of the school. We want them to be innovative. Why cannot the fence be colorful, water jars? Why would it cement fence everywhere? And these water jars are made by the students. And why can't the coconuts be colorful? <laughs> why? Is there any reason? Any proof that it cannot be? Women like to be beautiful. How do you know coconuts don't want to be? And the walkways, can't, why can't walkways be delightful and nice? And it's also used as a curbside dictionary. As you walk along, you learn new words, new sentences, and so on. That's in the school. And then this is the UN uh, Sustainable <coughs> Development Goals. As you walk along, you also learn about it. We can do many, many things. We also have a sex walk. All explanations about sex education as you walk. Don't need a book for everything. This is what the school is made of. Why they call it bamboo school? It's made of bamboo. We have a special chemical that stops bugs doing any harm to it. And we use bamboo because it's available everywhere. You can use it as multi-purpose. You can eat it as bamboo shoots. So you can use it for many, many things, including buildings. And uh, once you cut it, within five years, it's back to the same size again. So it's very sustainable. And we use it. And also, it never breaks in the wind. It's very smart. It survives in all weather. And part of the walkway is cement plus bamboo and thatch. And this is probably our proudest building, the bamboo geodesic dome. If you're an engineer or, or architect, you will know Buckminster Fuller, American architect designed this, but it's made of steel. But this is made of bamboo. It's the world's largest bamboo geodesic dome in the whole world. And it's designed by a Singaporean architect. That's what's outside and this is what is inside. So if you go there, you're very welcome to spend time there. And we, we use the art school for everybody else. We say we were given this by others, so we must share with others that we have. Whatever facilities we have, we share. And so that we're inside the classroom as well as outside the classroom. At 8 in the morning, all Thai schools, you stand, pay respect to the Thai flag. We said, no. We do that 8, 8 in the morning, your brain is fresh, you must absorb knowledge. And we do the national anthem in the afternoon. The country has not run away. It's still there. I have to do it at 8 in the morning. There's no law. Again, completely <coughs> outside the box. And so we start off with meditation in the morning. And then at breakfast, you thank the farmer. Every meal, you thank the farmer for the rice. You thank your parents for giving you birth. And you thank everybody who's made your life a bit better. So gratitude is a very important element. And then they do all the cleanup, no janitors. They do their own, they clean the toilets, they do everything, and the rooms. And then we have this inside the classroom. You'll see the table is very transparent, made of glass, again from IKEA. They helped us a lot on this. 
and then you can set your own room the way you want because the classroom is not for the teachers, for the students, so you set it the way you want it. And then we will have some to help teach English. So if any of you want a bit of a break, a bit of a holiday, a uh, free holiday, show you around the Northeast, be with young kids, let us know, we'll, we'll, we'll let you come and teach, even if you don't have to have an English accent. <laughs> and we let them do homework in groups of five. In real life, engineers, doctors, thieves, policemen, all do in groups of five at least. Why not homework? That's why they have to copy. So let them learn from each other, same as in life. And if you want, we have, a, uh, we have 400,000 baht per class for the students to borrow to do business, but they must be trained and, and, and pass the test before they can borrow the money to do. So every student must do businesses, must do business in groups of five. And there are sessions where students teach teachers. They must sit together in a group of five and say, what would be an interesting thing to teach the teacher? It doesn't have to be academic, it can be anything. It can be about the life of Patia Hitchcock, as an example, whatever. Uh, breeding habits of crickets, what, whatever you think is interesting for the teacher. But you must be prepared, the teacher will ask you questions that makes you a better student. We also have a, a session where my, the teachers give you the answer and you must come up with a question to get the right answer. The teacher might say six, and the correct one would be such as, what is three plus three? What is three times two? What is seven minus one? And before long, you realize there are thousands of questions to get one answer. So don't believe everything so easily. And then also, <coughs> if you have exams or like it, you can sit again next day. If you do a drawing, you don't know, you can rub it out and redo it again. Why not in real life in school? So next day you can sit again. If you don't improve, you do all much. And you get paid. Everyone likes a salary. So the students get a salary too, but based on performance, on your exams. If you get 85 but on what subject? You get 85, if you get 85 percent, you get 85 baht. 90 percent, 90 baht. If you fail 20 percent, 20 baht. Where else can you fail and get an award? <laughs> it's to prove that failure could be the beginning of success. Don't worry too much about it. So these are little things in life that we can teach, that we made up our own idea. And they must learn how to do many things, not just from books. For instance, part of physics, you know, how to build a rock. You have to calculate it all out. There's a physics element of it. And then this is making a bridge. The local temple said, can we please have a bridge to go over a small stream? So I went to physics again, and the teacher, the students worked together. They tried it out at the school, and they took it to the temple, and the village, and that's in working. So it's much more fun than in doing everything on paper. So student-centric in terms of learning, action, activity, and in community service. And also biodiesel, they go to shops that sell roast chicken or fried chicken and ask for the cooking oil and they make biodiesel out of it and they sell it at 15 baht per liter, much cheaper than the market. And again, it's much more fun than doing it on paper. And this is probably the only school in Asia, I think, that students are taught how to make water jars. These are two cubic meters, 2,000 liters of water. They make the frame then frame and putting it together with clay. And when that the form is made, then they put clay on the outside, followed by two layers of cement and wiring for strength. And then afterwards you remove the form, form cement form inside and the dried earth. And that's the old made by students and sold to the villagers. So they learn how to make <coughs> They learn how to make charcoal, but in chemistry is what is the composition, chemical composition, of a live tree, of a dead tree, of the wood, 